blessed love <clears throat> and peace within Ras Um This is a joint about the game and uh, some additional considerations. Recent communication consideration how the game works. So it begins by the beginning, the creation. Each person, each being has a sacred primordial relationship with the land, the nature that a being is born from. So now we're talking particularly in the homogenous experience when somebody comes from an ancestral homeland, lives in the ancestral homeland. Sacred primordial relationship. There's a wisdom, there's a peace, there's a harmony, there's a knowledge about how to live in those conditions and additionally um, that's strong. When a person ventures from that experience, from that habitat, um, a person has certain weakness because a person is less knowledgeable about how to be in other habitats, in other climates, in other conditions. So there are also benefits. People gain new knowledge, new technology, and additionally. So uh, in that experience, the technology provides an individual with uh, advantages. But in gaining that technology, the person becomes further withdrawn, further out there. Uh, concerning the earth and additionally. So uh, it's the plus and minus. That is the way it is today. That's the way it is for thousands of years. And in those thousands of years, amidst the migrations of peoples going away from their ancestral homelands through colonialism, imperialism, plights, stripes, and all that other stuff, um, People relocate to another area um, and people are weakened. People are further distanced from that primordial uh, relationship um, and make do best one can, either assimilating into the, to the local habitat, local culture, and additionally, or continually being somewhat of a, uh, an outsider uh, within uh, the, 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 the foreign place and, and otherwise. Um, this is what I and I observe as conditions stand today. Amidst all the migrations, at the risk of sounding politi politically incorrect, racial stereotypes, whatever else, this is what we observe. That kinfolk with lighter uh, complexion have an increasing uh, propensity and proclivity within technology. People with darker complexion have a, a closer relationship with earth uh, and the strength, the healing the well-being that exists within that. Uh, and so particularly within recent generations with slavery and additionally, there's this evolving methodology where um, people with lighter complexions um, delving and, 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 and entrenching within technology, getting further removed from that primordial relationship with land, earth, uh, and additionally, but st and, and needing an anchor, needing an anchor um, to be to be stabilized to continue to live on this earth um, and relate and, and, and whilst even having this technology otherwise the susceptibility is just getting lost in space um, and getting replaced uh, there's always when somebody is not recognized when somebody doesn't have that relationship with others there's always that susceptibility of being replaced by somebody who looks very similar um, and, and, and otherwise and so People, even when people have these amazing technologies to do things, still need relationship with others, and particularly others of darker complexion, darker um, um, skin complexion, to have some rootedness, to be remembered, to be supported as a, as a being on this earth. Um, and so, uh, and, and, it's a relationship, but it's also that there has to be some type of um, affection, some type of support where the person who's remembering the other person actually has some type of favor, has a, some motivation for continuing to remember that person and, and, and 
support that person in some way rather than the replacement or somebody else. Um, so historically, there's the enslavement and additionally, but in addition, be, uh, amidst that and beyond that, there's also that necessity and eventuality um, historically of the light complexion, even when abusing many people of, of darker complexion, having some type of positive relationship and, and, and uh, being seen with affection by somebody of darker complexion who serves as that, as that lighter complected person's anchor, particularly in that foreign land um, where otherwise the light complexion person drifts off into space, is, is redundant, is replaced by somebody else in the machinery in, in, in initially or another machine. So um, there's that symbiotic relationship, very necessary in both directions. Um, now, what is also observed in the game is uh, relationship by proxy lightweight, meaning that um, it might be uh, what we observe. And again, it's, it's an evolving methodology as people become increasingly aware of this. Um, it is the condition where um, a group of people uh, who, are, who have the advantages of technology and otherwise um, don't have a relationship or immediate direct relationship with somebody of, of dark complexion, the root, the anchor. Um, but hire somebody, a politician, a celebrity, an athlete of that same uh, light complexion, maybe another complexion, um, to be that, that, that the positive um, uh, relationship with anchors, maybe multiple anchors. So all those multiple anchors love that celebrity, love that athlete, love that politician. Uh, and that politician remembers the others, the satellites, the, the ones who are out there with all the advantages and, and technologies and the know-how. So that's the, where the relationship is. Then the technology people um, have to have that relationship with the politician in order to have that rootedness to be remembered and not to be replaced, not to drift out in space and be forgotten. Um, and so they rely upon the politician. Um, and there becomes that, again, the game between the politician and the, and the, and the potentates because the politician can be like, oh, I'll bump y'all. I'm going to keep it all for myself or go to somebody else. So there's that, and, and the potentates can, can do the leverage. The potentates can hire another celebrity. So that, there's game in that respect. But there's still that necessity of having that relationship eventually with the anchor, with the rootedness of Earth. So uh, it's, it's a matter of being mindful of that, um, not saying anything is greater or less than, just observing the conditions. Um, and and also recognizing one's value, one's one's balance within all the the pressures and leverages and everything else like that so that's one joint um there was something um previously about uh oh people talk about leadership um uh, leaders having ideas I'll, i listened to some reasoning with brethren recently beautiful brethren having beautiful reasoning um but also encourage brethren to consider and 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 and, and emphasize and prioritize it's not a matter of ideas. It's not a matter of like know-how of how, how the game works. Um, it's a matter of discipline. It's a matter of ethics. It's a matter of the righteous trod that we talk about, but putting that on it, um, identifying what those ethics are. Uh, and the, uh, the leaders don't need fantastic ideas. The leaders simply need that discipline, that trust. Um, and then there's a sovereignty that exists that well, there, there's a sovereignty that exists within that and the ideas ideas the solution it's not a matter of ideas it's solutions the solutions emerge from the discipline because we just focus on the priorities what we need staying away from the the atrocities uh and then so what do we need and then, and then we just figure out the, the necessity breeds innovation so we, we focus on what we what we're supposed to be doing and let go of all the treasures and riches and uh, and distractions and they go, okay, so what, what do we need? We need some food. We need some clean water. We need shelter. We need some clothing. Okay, how do we do that? Simple. Um, that what's difficult is letting go of those things because so many kinfolk, brethren in the trod, and additionally, have a lot of psychological attachments to these things. Uh, and particularly when brethren have an, gain a knowledge about how the game works, how the system works, um, um, business, law, um, even medicine, engineering, and otherwise, um, that type of knowledge about how the empire works 
also brings with it um, the trappings of, of how one values oneself to just to network and, 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 and be in relationship with other people who have that knowledge. So, um, and that's what's necessary to let go of, um, to do the trod in a, in a prom, uh, well, I'll put it like this. We talked about with brethren before about, you know, each brethren has their own way of doing things, but to recognize that that is not the epitome of the, of the trod. Having that knowledge about how the empire works is not the epitome. Um, and being, well, it's balance and recognizing that the authority exists within the discipline. It's not within the, the money. It's not within the knowledge about how empire works. Even we're looking at the example of His Majesty Haile Selassie I. Recognizing that, again, there's, all, there's an established land from which he, his, his domain is acknowledged. There are rituals that he practices as foundation. His relationships with other monarchies is predicated upon his relationship with his heritage, with, with his land, and with his rituals. The authority that is recognized with him amongst the other sovereigns of the world is predicated upon those foundational components of his being, the heritage, the land, the rituals, and as well as the knowledge. Now, a lot of what His Majesty does, Haile Selassie I, in his life is a matter of modernizing Ethiopia at that moment. At this point, that's not modernizing any society is not the priority. Um, we've gotten past, we've got, we've been, o things have been over modernized. It's over developed. So the necessity of today um, is acknowledging what is healthy and guiding our systems and institutions um, into that organic way of being, which is the liberty, which is Rastafari. So, um, and, and that it's, it's the liberty, what, wherever, respectively indigenous uh, around the world. So, um, it's a matter of each being, each group, each, each culture having its uh, organic relationship with nature um, and guiding the systems and institutions um, into returning that, into that uh, organic relationship. So um, it's not a matter of, of knowing further about technology uh, and mathematics, not knocking that. People are always going to have that proclivity. That's not the priority, though. Uh, and, and it's not even a matter of trying to make it a world agenda or, or taking over the world or being world leaders or anything. It's simply living in a healthy way, sharing that knowledge. People respond to it naturally and organically. That, and that's, this is what Meng Tzu teaches. This is what Kong Tzu teaches. This is what Lao Tzu teaches. This, this is what all our sages teach, all our teachers teach, um, our ancestors and prophets. So um, that's what it is. Build it within our house and, and live it and share so, um, for for brethren who share in the same tribe, similar interests is one of the one of the worst sabotages. Uh, sharing similar interests, worst sabotage because people gravitate to each other, particularly when there's a lot of hostilities towards that 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 particular interest. But at the same time, when kinfolk don't have that interest as a priority, are not devoted to that, are not putting their whole into that, it's a pastime, it's a leisure, it's a vacation, it's a holiday then that solidarity that's built upon that shared interest um, is susceptible to betrayal, uh, to, to, to um, bribery from other interests and otherwise, particularly when it becomes successful. So um, it's a matter of the daily trod. Um, and there is benefit in having knowledge about empire, but, actually, but, but recognizing that all, of the, all that knowledge uh, brings is attached to the things that are exactly antithetical to what is healthy uh, as well. So those who have significant knowledge, including myself, lightweight, kind of, sort of, um, those who have considerable knowledge about how the system, the world system works and additionally, are to be seen with considerable suspicion because the, such kinfolk are significantly attached to the things to the atrocities that that, that that empire and that knowledge are committing. So there is benefit in having that knowledge and working with kinfolk with that knowledge. But at the same time, to temper 
that propensity of selecting such individuals as the the leadership, the official leadership, and uh, and everything else like that, and recognizing that as much as that knowledge is, it's also fraught with atrocities and the exact thing that's against the trot. So that's part of the part of the um, the yin and the yang, the balance um, of of of. Um, Of knowledge of the system, so one of the one of the ways of uh, alleviating that um, the negatives of that knowledge is letting go. And, and am I just promoting myself? People can take it for what it's worth. I mean, I, I can continue doing my self disclaim self disclaimers and everything else like that. But this is what is learned. So um, again, it's a matter of the sufferation, and it's and the point is not to suffer. Uh, but in terms of letting of, of of letting distancing oneself from the atrocities of empire whilst having a knowledge about it, it's it's a matter of letting go of the trappings. And I have this device here. I have I, items and things that are gleaned from the empire. So I am to be looked at with suspicion in that respect accordingly. At the same time, I let I let I let a lot of it go. So. Um, that's and that's not to get recognition for that. It's just a matter of like I'm walking a trod, and I'm recognizing that these things are, are gleaned from things, and it's not a priority. A car is not a priority. Uh, it's actually an ex extreme liability uh, and a detriment, um, multifold. So um, nice clothes, uh, what we purchase, like that's that's where the answer is. So this that's the solution. What are you eating? Where are you getting your food from? How are you getting your food? Who are the suppliers? What are the terms of trade? What are the systems of distribution? Where do you stay? How is that secured? What are the utilities that you utilize? How do you cover those utilities? How many? How much of those utilities do you know? Do you know on your own? Water collection, solar paneling. If you do solar paneling, do you know how to construct a solar panel? Where do you get the solar panel from? Who are them people? What do they do? What are they about? What are their ethics? So these are the conversations that we need to have because those are the solutions. Those are the priorities. Ideology, philosophy, including myself. Um, this is this is where the hoof hits the roof. Hit the hoof hits the ground. We let go of that rubber. Where the hoof hits the ground. Um, how are we how are we answering? And, it, and it's tough because that's personal and it's sensitive. Oh, I don't want you to know about all my business. Oh, you, you want us to know all about your beliefs, but you don't want us to know about your believing. How about that? Um, but that's what it is. That's what the solution is. That's what's up. That's what the conversation is. That's that's what the re the, the valuable reasoning uh, is about. Uh, and it's not easy because we there's there's a lot of interference. There's a lot of uh, uh, buffers and and intermediaries in in this communication. Uh, and so it's 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 difficult to have a a, a, a confidential, uh, meaningful, substantive like business thing when kinfolk are living distant from each other transportation um and then communication through this thing is is, is challenging as well because we know we we know there's eyes and ears all over the place so um but that's that's what's that's what's involved because otherwise it's just it's just being part of the game and it's getting caught up in the, in the hype and everything else like that so um worry less worrying less about uh the propaganda worrying less about the news and again, as I mentioned before, we have we have two paths to choose every day in this life. Civil war. That's a that's for thousands of years. That's always been it. It's always been civil war. That's always been the prospect. That always is the prospect. Civil war. Tenacious, nasty, bloody, heinous, atrocity, civil war. That's always it. That's one path. Or rituals. That's it, knowing what the rituals are. The priests know what the rituals are. The kings and queens sometimes know what the rituals are, so that's why they had to go to the priests. 
but that's what keeps the balance. That's what keeps the focus. That's what keeps us, our mind on the, a purpose greater than ourselves and a relationship, not just with this life, but with our ancestors and the eternal creator, the most high. Rituals. Our ancient teachers about this Moshe Rabbeinu leading the children of Israel out of Mitzrayim. First thing, here are the rituals to be sovereign. Kong Tzu from China thousands of years ago. Rituals. Root yourself within the rituals. That's relationship with the seasons, with the sustenance. Every day, that's our that's our that's our decision. Are we rooting ourselves? Are we are we guiding ourselves towards the civil war? Or are we guiding ourselves towards the rituals? The stories we share, the songs we share, the ethics we live. Are connected with the rituals are strengthened through the rituals are shared through the rituals and again with the rituals it's an economics because now we're, we're, we're guiding our, our spending according to the rituals rather than just party when we want to party we're saving up for the next ritual and that's when we gather that's when we break bread that's when we come together as community and share and build relationship our matriarchs speak with each other and say what well, who needs what what's going on Who's ready for marriage? Who needs some healing? Who's getting to the next stage of education? The chiefs sit down and talk about politics, about security, about harvest and economics at our rituals, our gatherings throughout each, through, through each season, through each year. And that's where we get the unity. That's where we get the solidarity organically, naturally from the rituals from the gatherings, from the regularity, from the communication, from the trust that is cultivated regularly. Yeah, we saw him at the other one. Yeah, we saw him. We, he been coming through. We know him. We know her. They've been through. They've been coming through. Rituals. So that's what we talk about. That's what we reason about. That's what's healthy. That's where the solution is. That's where the solution is found. So, that's within us. Don't need nobody else. Don't need empire concerning that. Uh, that's not, I'm not gonna say it's not a knock on the un empire, but, um, there's communication and the imperialistic things like the, these devices and stuff help at the moment with communication, but ultimately it's not necessary. Watch the moon. Take notes. Learn how to write, how, learn how to make paper. Learn how to make a pen. Learn how to carve a pencil. Communicate. So, I mean, when I say we don't need empire for that, it's not an undue, severe reliance upon empire. Uh, empire needs many things, just as many things have a dependency on the empire as well. Um, and one of the significant needs of the empire at this moment is making a space where that is free from the pollution of the empire. The sound pollution, the air pollution, the water pollution, the land pollution, all that pollution having sanctuaries around the world where the empire says okay yeah we're not gonna we're not gonna mess around here all the different entities all the different uh, cults and cliques and conspiracies and what them call them them, them uh, uh, what's this Italian word So Illuminatis, all the Illuminatis, all the gangsters say, yo, okay, yo, serious, we're going to keep this space free. Anybody who comes here, yo, we collectively at them. That's what the League of Nations is supposed to be. That's what the United Nations is supposed to be. But um, that's what it is one way or the other. Because without that, the whole team comes that way. So all that being said, uh, anything else? Oh, woman, 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 woman. 
bless it, bless it. So one thing I learned personally, I'm learning communication, accommodation. I live in a cave, um, and it's 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 strict living. It is austere. Uh, there's considerable discipline, but it's also beauty and light. That being said, it does re require some accommodation for some or acclimation for somebody who's coming from convention, particularly for someone who's coming from higher socioeconomic, uh, who has a. Uh, um, an intellectual proclivity towards this peace and, and kumbaya type pluralism and, 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 and multiculturalism but at the same time it's letting a lot of those things of the upper middle class whatever lifestyle go car lots of clothes toys money job blah still work and it's still service but it's just in a different way so and valued valuing 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 uh, um, for this as well but what I'm, what I'm getting at here with the woman woman beautiful woman is um, in the recent experience of wearing the t-shirt wife marriage family children um, even before that there are a number of occasions where um, there is a silent interaction with women uh, uh, with a woman I'll say between myself and a woman and there's an indication of interest mutually but there is difficulty in broaching conversation from this side it's as I've mentioned recently it's not a matter of necessarily fear or being intimidated or fear of rejection because I'm not superior but um, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with being awkward so that's less of a thing one it's the imposition or the, the, the concern of imposition on the for myself towards the woman so that's one of the hesitancies another hesitancy is um, the fact that again I am prohibited from proselytizing and so um, offering or even beginning the topic of marriage can be perceived as an, a, 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 as an endeavor of proselytizing of trying to convert a woman into this walk because it does require being a wife being my wife does require living in a in a um, uh, compatible way and in, 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 in many disciplines so um, it could be perceived or accused of being proselytizing just uh, suggesting a woman being married with me so I have to be very mindful of that it's not it's not absolutely prohibited but I have to be very mindful of it because there's an extreme amount of scrutiny from within the circle and from outside the circle ultimately there is no outside the circle but um, from from protagonists as well as antagonists um, so that's that's another thing now one of the things that people do is like having small talk uh, and then kind of like uh, d talking about things that are comparatively quote-unquote platonic uh, even share purpose shared interest uh, and then inviting another social gathering another social gathering uh, um, meeting or, or, or uh, occasion where there may be opportunity for talking further personally and, and looking at the prospect of relationship talk of relationship so that's a, a general kind of methodology in the romantic methodology of, of postmodern society. Again, um, I do I do that within recent years. Um, it becomes a clumsy thing because what is recognized is that the 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 realm that I exist within and the realm of conventional society are very different, and jumping back and forth from those realms. Is a, it's a is a, is a, is a trippy it's trippy so um, and then that leads to cause me because then I try to accommodate and respond and then uh, in the language or the demeanors of, of, of convention and then it be becomes like clumsy so that's one thing but even beyond that um, what is recognized is that um, there, for myself particularly when wearing the t-shirt there's less there's less um, availability for small talk and having that intro, that kind of com comparatively platonic introduction it's all purposeful now we can talk education and additionally but just like me approaching a woman and introducing something that doesn't have to do with marriage or relationship I'm 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 
further precluded from doing that because I'm on Front Street saying what my priorities are. Wife, marriage, family, children. So any small talk is like, you see right through that. Um, so, and it's and not trying to be fake or doing a front or, or run game, but just recognizing that even that methodology, those that social protocol, um, it's less applicable for myself, or for kinfolk like myself, because um, it's 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 very obvious, and so it becomes like it's a it's a big step from from, from saying nothing to, to just having that conversation. Now, on the other side, a woman doesn't well. It, it, In certain ways, again, I can't speak from experientially about being a woman, but um, I have yet to see a woman wear the same T-shirt: husband, marriage, family, children. So, and I have yet to meet. Uh, well, there, 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 there are fewer people, it seems, who practice the same discipline or have the same restrictions. Um, that that are applied to myself. So that being said, there is awareness that women have other vulnerabilities and sensitivities and and so uh, another reasons for being modest and timid and not making a first approach or not saying the first words or not uh, doing that Not taking that step first and there's always there's always intermediary steps even when it's nonverbal but taking that first verbal step um, so it's it's a it's a nuance and um I'm thinking of a few specific incidents within recent weeks where um, and I'm thinking about even further incidents but particularly the, a few incidents where uh, there's a, I, I have an, the occasion of interacting with a, a young sister um, out of the blue who I've yet to meet in person um, or, or I'm meeting in person for the first time um, and um, on one occasion, sister sits right next to me, uh, waiting for the bus. There are seats all over the place. She sits right next to me, so she, it's she, there's something being communicated there, as a way of trying to stay focused and disciplined. Um, I share with her some education, some things about the world and rivers, and additionally to help keep the mind on something healthy. Um, but the, the ki consideration is why is she sitting right next to me? Is she is, does she have an interest in relationship? Does she want to talk about that? And then it's a matter of like, okay, well, is she here of her own volition? Is, is, is she working for some dude, and like trying to trying to like do some hustle or something? Uh, is she in need of? Is she is she concerned? Is she scared? Is she like need a safety? And she sees me as somebody who's safe, and wants security. I've had those situations too, multiple times. So I'm trying to read what the situation is. What I recognize is that it's an it's always a combination of everything. Um, and it's a matter of like discerning how much of any one of those things and what I also recognize is that a lot of that in this cosmos is Determined by my intentions not necessarily a matter of like I want it to be this way and it's that way, but how I approach affects What I discover is the actuality. That's the nature of manifestation and becoming for each of us respectively But anyways all that being said I do my best to stay focused to be intentional on, on the righteousness um, but at the same time, yo, be fruitful and multiply. So I have that responsibility as well. Um, so I, as I'm doing that, doing the that, that processing and, and discerning how to communicate, uh, very often uh, to this point, there has yet to be that, um, well, in a proper, sustained way, there has yet to be that um, connection of marriage from that initial interaction of just sitting quietly um, and in particular like I said it's happened a couple a, few, a number of times in, in recent weeks um, and there are like three three main thoughts or the three main considerations that I have in that experience one is that I it's a there's a certain amount of frustration and resentment, like, oh, here's a woman, she's teasing me. Uh, she's just getting, she's here just to get attention. Um, and uh, there's that. And then um, maybe eventually, like, people arrive or uh, another dude arrives or whatever, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's what, there it is. So 
but that's not necessarily what it was at that moment. Anyways, that, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Another scenario, another thought is that she's interested, in, in, but she's, she's fearful, she's timid, she's shy, she's being modest, um, and so she's communicating interest by positioning herself in proximity, but abstaining from going all the way forward and actually introducing herself or um, uh, speaking directly. Um, many women do, but particularly reserved women and, and modest women, it, it's very thing. So then I consider how, how I can approach because I'm being presumptuous. It might be a number of different scenarios, and if, if there's an inaccuracy within the presumption, then I am an answerable for that. So I'm less concerned about consequences to myself, but the concern is about being forthright for her well being um, and for the integrity of the principles around my community. So, and in the meanwhile, when I don't, whenever I haven't said anything, when I haven't responded, um, and then we continue in our own ways, then there's that experience of like, oh, was, maybe she put herself out there and I didn't even respond. And then there's that, that, that sense of almost guilt, but uh, the pain of, of like not, not um, duly responding to the obvious communication, particularly nonverbal communication of interest, seeing me with my t-shirt uh, and message in addition. Um, and so I consider like not acting uh, or I should say acting has its own um, susceptibilities, but not acting also has its own susceptibilities as well. At the end of the day, I mean, where I, I, I we, we play what they say, Monday morning quarterback of evaluating things and preparing for a, a, a potential second or the next occasion of, of interaction or whatever, nothing is giving, everything happens by the grace of the most high. But what I find is that, okay, there's that evaluation. Think about what, what happened previously and say, how, what will you do again in that situation? And sometimes that situation happens again, but often it does. It, it happens in a different way, and it's a new challenge. And so it has to be considered at that moment. So um, many years of that learning process. Eventually it becomes simply a matter of communication, honesty, um, regularity. Again, routines, rituals. Um, and oftentimes, again, it's a matter of observation, and particularly our species of being. Uh, it's a matter of observing people for, for a certain period uh, to gain a certain comfort, particularly when just knowing each other directly without knowing each other's families and, and, and everything beforehand. There's a certain amount of observation, and so that happens through routine, being in the same school, seeing the same people um, every day or, or, or frequently throughout each week or throughout a semester or otherwise seeing people in the neighborhood um, or otherwise. So there's a, there's a, there are a number of methodologies of observation to help to build those steps closer to each other uh, and then build communication. I've seen you around. I notice you do this, da, 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 da. Um, and, and ultimately not even thinking about it too much, not trying to be too contrived or pre-calculated. Uh, go with vibration. That's another thing too. Some people might, it might be a heavy day that day. It might, some people might be going through like, yo, just had this uh, argument or just had this like, somebody, this cat just came up to me. I'm still dealing with that. Um, in recent occasions, like I was hot. I was like walking a lot and I'd like cool down because uh, when I sweat, that's less comfortable for people. So I'm mindful of that. Um, and uh, so it's sometimes like the, the, the actual interaction, the actual occasion of interacting or meeting kinfolk, even indirectly, just being in the same space with each other, um, the energy at that moment, um, the person's coming from something, someplace else, and it's challenging. And so, um, that that one time kind of like um, serendipity um, is. A beautiful thing but it's a precarious thing to expect or to prepare for um, one one thing to better prepare for is regularity of being in, in locations being seen not necessarily going out and looking at people but being there and being seen and, and allowing oneself to be observed 
um, so that people can, for a dude, women can observe the brethren um, from a distance, from a safety, uh, and, and kind of see how the brethren interacts with others, how they comport themselves, and additionally, uh, without having to approach directly or otherwise. And eventually, when there is enough comfort, then there's the, there's the propensity for approach um, and, and, and conversation accordingly. Uh, communication is, is essential. Um, honesty is essential. Honesty in the words, honesty in thoughts and intentions, honesty in behavior. Um, modesty and additionally so anyways all right those are some some considerations we got to begin the day today 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 uh, so again we give all thanks and praise to the most high bless our love and peace and lots of fire